Hello and welcome to another edition of First Opinion and uh, I am back, uh, me, Mr Lewis Moon, uh, in order to review or give my first opinion, hence the title, of Series 10, Episode 10, uh, The Eaters of Light, written by Classic Who writer Rona Monroe. Now, uh, I won't talk too much about the trailer at the end in this video. I will do a separate video later on in the week about my predictions uh, for uh, John Sims' return and the Mondasian Simon's return um, in uh, a video at some point this week. Uh, however, um, I'll touch on that a little bit towards the end. So the Eaters of Light, we go back to a historical adventure, the second one this series after Thin Ice, uh, where the Doctor Bill and Nardole arrive in ancient Aberdeenshire uh, in Scotland. And they discover the secret of the missing Night Legion, which this is a real uh, myth uh, about uh, nobody knows how they went missing. I thought it was quite a neat way of uh, solving how they went missing, you know, going into this sort of um, gateway uh, to guard the planet from the Eater of Light, because otherwise uh, the beast would get stronger and it would feast on all of the stars and most of the universe would cease to exist. But yeah, I thought this was a really... Uh, great uh, idea. I think I might have said last week, it might have been in one of my other reviews somewhere, uh, that um, Doctor Who is at its best when it tries to rely on sort of making things scary or solving myths, uh, such as like, uh, you know, Listen uh, made um, the bed scary. Uh, and, you know, uh, Blink made statues scary, you know, Stephen Moffat does that a lot, but this episode does uh, the other thing which Doctor Who does well, which is solving myths and legends. As for the episode itself, it was a bit meh, uh, to be honest, it was very meh. Um, it wasn't a standout classic by any means, uh, and probably ranks up with the similar quality of The Empress of Mars. Two relatively uh, enjoyable episodes, which I thought had quite a few similarities between them. You know, we had uh, the... Um, both of them had these, uh, these sort of humans pitted against a uh, threat... Um, and uh, the Doctor, Bill and Nardo come along to, uh, but yeah, the uh, two races or the two uh, two sort of uh, cultures uh, in the end resolve things and decide uh, to uh, save this situation themselves. So I found quite a few similarities between the two. But, yeah, last week's is slightly better, I thought. I thought Empress of Mars was slightly better. It's very divisive online. I mean, it's not a stand-up classic, as I said earlier. But it's nowhere near an awful episode either, because it had some really great moments in it. And it had the potential to be better than it was. I, I wanted to like it more than I did. Uh, because, uh, you know, it was Rona Monroe. It was a classic Who writer. And I really liked Survival, her first story. I know it ended Classic Who, but it's a brilliant story. I think I did a review a little while back on Survival. But yeah, I really enjoyed it, uh, Survival. Uh, and this one wasn't as great. But uh, yeah, it, it was a bit there. There wasn't really, you know, too significant stuff going on. I mean, the guest cast were good. Car was good. Uh, she's on the fan show on the Doctor Official YouTube account if you want to see a little interview with Rebecca Benson. 
Uh, and yeah, it was quite a good guest cast. Um, however, yeah, uh, and the uh, threat was quite significant this week, I found. However, it, it, it failed to be a classic in my books. And I really enjoyed it again. But there was too much that I didn't like about it. Uh, in order to, you know, make it not a classic. Uh, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit meh, and uh, I wasn't too fond of this one. But, uh, you know, it ranks up roughly halfway th in the series out of the five we've had. I was saying that, yeah, the first half of this series was actually better than the second half so the first five episodes was better than the second half even though we've had pyramid at the end of the world in this part but we also had the monk trilogy and two relatively uh bare episodes uh yeah i just uh didn't really find this one too great to be honest um but yeah i don't know uh well Let's uh, talk about Missy quickly. Uh, I don't know if she's redeemed herself, but obviously next week we see her and John Sim together. We do have a brand new picture of uh, the two of them together, a sort of Day of the Doctor Mickey take uh, from the 50th anniversary where it's David Tennant and Matt Smith. This time it was Michelle Gomez and John Sim. Uh, really cool picture. Check it out if you haven't. And it will be great to see them together. And whether Missy's really gone onto the good side, I don't know. But she's showing a lot of emotion for us. She's she's definitely changed. Let's go over to the Who meter then. So this is the Who meter. Uh, if you haven't watched any of my other first opinions, this is where I sort of rank each of the episodes uh, from fantastic over here too awful over here as you can see uh maybe uh oxygen uh is at the top uh at the moment still it's my favorite episode of the series uh perhaps world enough and time can beat it i've heard positive critics reviews so perhaps it could be oxygen pyramids there uh thin ice is there uh, Empress of Mars is there. Uh, where does where does this one go then? So uh, extremists. So uh, tenth extremists. Ooh. Okay. So I think I'm gonna put it here. So I'm gonna put it between Live the Land and Knock Knock. So I prefer Knock Knock and I uh, prefer this one than Live the Land slightly. Uh, so that's where it ranks on the Who Meter. Where do you think it ranks in the Who Meter or, or where do you think it ranks in the series or what do you think of the Eaters of Light? Please comment below. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. We always do. So, obviously, at the end of the episode, we saw the massive Series 10 trailer for World Enough and Time, The Doctor Falls, the series finale. We got a tease of the Mondasian Sidemen, uh, Missy Bilanado wandering around the ship, the partly converted Sidemen, the Top Knots, the gigantic spacecraft, which the Doctor... Uh, Bill, Nardole and Missy are trapped on and we get our second look, our first speaking look, our first proper look at John Sim in series 10 so it's wonderful to see him give us a kiss. Uh, so uh, yeah that was very exciting that trailer uh, hopefully World Enough and Time the Doctor Falls can be great. We've got one hour, 45 minutes of it, so, you know. We've got lots of side men, 
Uh, the double master story for the first time ever. We've had multi-doctor stories, but never multi-master stories. So I'm looking forward to seeing Michelle Gomez and John Sim together. And also, it'll be great to see uh, the Mondasian Sidemen and other Sidemen designs back. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah, uh, thank you for joining me uh, again for First Opinion. Uh, please like and subscribe the video uh, for the video. So please and comment below with your thoughts on the episode. Uh, and what do you think is coming up in World Enough in Time, The Doctor Falls? I will be back um, next uh, Sunday for my first opinion on World and Enough and Time. And uh, before that, I'll have my top five finale predictions where I'll be discussing how I think John Sim will return. Uh, there won't be any spoilers because I know how it happens, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh, and the uh, Mondasian Sidemen, how I think they will return. So, thank you for joining me again, and I will see you next time, same time, same space. Goodbye!